So I've been getting a lot of questions about the status of Among the Dead, and I thought I would just go ahead and make this video so I could address it to everyone out there who might have the same questions. It has been a while. Uh, we started working on this about a year, a year and a half ago. Um, one of the reasons it's taken so long is, to be honest with you, when I took on this project, I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. I really did not anticipate how difficult it would be to make a zombie film, at least one of quality. And that's a big deal to me. I didn't want to make something that looked like shit. So we raised the money and we started shooting scenes. And through our first scene that we shot, it was about six or seven pages of script. And we realized that, yeah, this film is going to be big. It's going to take a lot. Um, and, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, up until this point, I've made a lot of films that were just basically no budget. They were made for next to nothing. Uh, wrote them with the, you know, thought in mind that it wasn't going to take a whole lot to do. I wrote it with locations I knew I had access to or I could get easily. Um, not a whole lot of action, but the action that was there would be easy to pull off. But Zombies is it's a whole other game. Um, it's very expensive to make zombies because if you want to make them quality work, you're going to have to have quality artists, and quality artists don't work for free. Nor would I ask a quality artist to work for free because in the end, I mean, the art department for something like the Among the Dead, which is a post-apocalyptic film, is so, so important. I mean, in order for it to be believable, you need to create that world. So... That's one of the reasons it's taken so long. Um, that and as we were shooting, we realized that, you know, to do something different than everybody else that's out there in the indie world who are making films and they're shooting them on DSLRs, they're putting them out in, you know, 20 film festivals around the country, winning a few trophies maybe here and there. Uh, they get the prestige of saying, hey, my film won the film festival. Oh, here's another win. Uh, okay, but then a year down the line, films on the shelf being sold on your website. Uh, maybe a small no-name distributor puts it out and you may get a check you know, every six months for $20. <laughs> uh, in the end, what did, what did you make that film for other than yourself? You know, the love of making it, yeah, that's great. And you've got a product showing your art, what you've done, but how does that help you? You're still working a day job, you know? Um, you're not really a filmmaker then, at, at that point, at least not professionally, because you're not making money at it. And even if you are barely making any profit um, from a business standpoint, you'd be bankrupt. So... We started thinking about that and said, look, you know, if we're going to do this and we're going to spend this kind of money on this film, we need to make it right. We need to make it to where we can make some money, at least enough money to where we cover all of our bases. We need to make a movie that someone's going to want to see. And by doing that, you can't use unknown actors. Who the hell wants to go see somebody they don't know? That's just the way society works. You have to get a couple of actors that people have seen in movies before. Even if it's a movie they saw when they were a kid, they know who they are. And they'd be more willing to see that movie. And, you know, quality distributors will be more willing to take a chance on putting out your product if there's at least one or two actors that have had some type of history, even if they haven't made movies in years. You know, they were in a film at one time. And those actors are always probably willing to work on a quality independent film if you've got the right story in it. And yes, it does still go down to being about the story. Um, but, you know, having a name actors helps. And so that's one of the things that we decided, look, you know, we have to do this. So we went out and we've started courting some actors that we think would be good for the parts that um, we might be interested. They're still doing indie work. Uh, but people know who they are. If you say their names, people know who they are. They've seen at least one of their movies. And so, again, that just put our budget up a little bit higher. Um, but in the end, it pays off. Because I, for one, 
don't want to make movies just for me. And I don't want to make movies that I go take to a film festival that only other filmmakers, their girlfriends and family, and, you know, a handful of people that are really into indie films are going to see. You know, um, it's great. I like doing that. I like the feedback that comes through it. I'm not knocking film festivals. I, I enjoy them. Um, but that's not what I want. So, um, we made that decision. We also made the decision that we didn't want to look like every other independent film that's being shot out there on DSLR cameras. I'm not knocking DSLR cameras. They're a great tool. But they've also made it easy for... A nice way to say this, people that have no business really making films calling themselves filmmakers. Anybody can go out and make a film now and uh, with a DSLR camera, and 90% of it is pure shit. I don't like saying that about people's art because I admire them and I encourage anyone to go out and make their film, but let's just be honest. Most of what you're making is not very good. So I, um, I don't want to do that. I can tell what a DSLR camera looks like. And um, they don't look good to me. So we decided we're going to shoot on the red cams. And then you'll get the indie guys and be like, oh, the fucking red doesn't mean anything. Black Magic 4K, that's nothing. It's all about your story. Uh, having a red cam's not going to make you a good filmmaker. It doesn't make your, your film any fucking better. Well, that's bullshit. Okay? It's bullshit. Yeah, you have to have a good story. But it's also, what is it? Film is about what we're seeing. It's a visual story. So you have to have it be appealing to the eyes. If you have just a fucking thing that looks like you shot on an iPhone, I mean, people will be okay. They might watch it, but it's not appealing. So I know digital will ever beat film. Film always is going to look better because it's magical. There's something to 35 millimeter print. I only wish I had that kind of budget because one day I will <laughs> shoot on film because nothing comes close. The closest thing we got right now is the Reds. So that's what we're shooting on. Um, that's my opinion. Um, some of you filmmakers out there are going to say, fuck you, you're just being an asshole. Or, I don't agree with you. But, and I don't really care, to tell you the truth. It's my opinion. And um, in the end, the films will speak for themselves. You know, um, I, I'm a humble guy, uh, for the most part, when it comes to my art, um, but I'm also confident enough to know that I, of all the film festivals I've been to, and everything I've competed in, and I've seen these other films, that, yeah, there's a big difference, it's a very big difference, when I put my films that are shot on Black Magics and Reds up on that screen, and you can tell you know, who the pros, taking it professionally, at least professionally as far as seriousness goes, and who's just throwing together a, a film with what they had. So, not knocking anybody, but Among the Dead is too damn important for me. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just make it something that you throw together. So, we're gonna be shooting on Reds. And we're going to be using old film glass, which gives it a really cool look. I'm not going to be saying what kind of glass we're using. I'm not giving away our secrets. <laughs> but the look is unique because we are using these old film lenses. And uh, it makes a difference. It really creates an atmosphere. Plus, I got a really good color. Star DP is damn good at what he does. So... Um, that's another thing. So, touching back on budget and, and everything, you know, for those of you out there that have been asking the questions, you've those of you who have donated to our Indiegogo or Kickstarter and helped make what we've got so far happen, what we shot is a sizzle reel. And for those of you who don't know what a sizzle reel is, um, it's basically a sample scene. You take some scenes from your script and you make it as close to what you think you want your end product to look like. And um, we've shot four scenes from the script. Um, 
And uh, right now, that's pretty much all we're going to be doing. We're, we're, we're trying to get our, our budget now. So we have a really, really good, well-put-together business plan. And we have these sample scenes that people can see and know that what we're doing is legit. You know, we screened one of our sizzles at Walker Stalker Convention in Dallas. That's the Walking Dead Expo. And we had at least 150, 200 people there, and that's no bullshit. Um, people were walking by, and they stopped. And afterwards, we did a Q&A, and <laughs> for real, it was people were asking questions. They were legitimately interested in what we're doing. And um, one of the guys that were in The Walking Dead had a had a little short film that, that he was in prior, and no one asked him a single question. So that was cool. And uh, we've screened it. The sizzle at, a, at another film festival where, again, people were really like, wow, you know, that was really good. So that feels good to us because we know that what we're doing is quality work and will be quality work. And um, the script is solid. Um, we just got an LOI, which is a letter of intent to be in the movie by the actor Zach Galligan. And uh, he was in Gremlins. And Gremlins 2, and Waxworks, and Waxworks 2, and Hatchet 3, um, and so on and so forth. But uh, he read the script, and you know, he thought it was solid. So, yeah, and that was his thing, solid work. And uh, he, he really enjoyed it. And the few people that I've, I've let read the script so far have all said the same thing. It's paced well, it's really well written, good dialogue, and that's important. Because the story is, the story is very important. But again, I go back to, you have to present your story in a format that is appealing to the eyes. And your sound has to be spot on. I mean, most people will forgive an image that's shot on an iPhone as long as the audio is clean and they can understand everything. But I want more than just clean audio. We're working full sound design. Um, We've got digital effects and practical effects that we're going to add in there. We've got some amazing locations, so we're going to have to do some travel around Texas to some of these rural areas to really get these locations. And the travel's not cheap. So, and that's what's taken so long. It's because if you want to do something, do it right, is what I'm thinking. You know, I could rush this film. I could have shot it on a DSLR. I could have thrown... A little bit of Halloween makeup on these zombies and shot this damn thing in two weeks. But it would be shit. And I'm not making shit. I refuse to make shit. And uh, anyone on my YouTube channel can look at some of the stuff I've posted. And you, maybe you hate it, maybe you don't, but you can't deny the fact that everything I've put out has at least had some redeeming qualities to it. Which... Some filmmakers have none. You know, they think they're the funniest guy in the fucking room when it's absolutely ridiculous. Some of the shit that I see. The acting is t terrible. Absolutely fucking horrible. Don't cast your friends in your fucking films, man. It's a movie. And take it serious. Unless you just don't care. If you're just making movies for fun, great. That's fine. But if you're going to take your shit serious and you're going to make independent films then you need to find the best damn actors you can because that's one of the things that, that can sell your film without having a star. If you have really solid acting, it's believable. And that's gonna grab the that's gonna grab the audience. The audience has to care about the people that are on film. They have to believe that that's going on. If they don't believe it, then what the fuck are you doing? What are they gonna be watching it for? I was in a film festival and I was watching this film, and it was so bad. The acting was so horrible that I, I couldn't sit through it. I had to leave. And I was asking myself as I was walking out of there, did this filmmaker really think that was good? And as a director, how did he let that get on the screen? And... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It's not happening with me. So that's why I'm getting professional acting. Yeah.
So it is what it is. I'm all tired of bashing people, so I'm not going to do that anymore. I apologize. I got on a rant there. Um, this is about Among the Dead. And again, I just want to take this time now to thank everybody who has supported me and supported the film. It means everything to me. And please bear with me. Because in the end, this is going to be awesome. I promise that. I've mentioned Zach because I can. Because he's already signed his LOI. I've got two other actors at his level or higher that are in negotiation now. And once I get that LOI in hand, I can make that announcement. I'm really hoping that we'll have our budget by, uh, by summertime. Could be longer, but we really really hoping that we can be filming again this summer and be fully funded and make the film that we set out to make a year and a half ago. Um, the wait's going to be worth it though, guys. I promise you that. This movie was... The script was written the day my brother died. David killed himself. And I wrote the outline of the script that day. And I swore that I would make this film. And it's a tribute to him. So I'm not going to give up. I'll never give up until it's done. So uh, keep the emails coming. And uh, I enjoy hearing from you guys. Give me your feedback. And uh, like the Among the Dead page. And we also have AmongTheDeadMovie.com. We're working on that. We also have... Uh, couple of other websites that we've bought that we'll, uh, we'll be announcing soon. They're all under construction at the time. Um, okay, well, Access Rant is over. That's our update. So keep a lookout, guys. We're, we're, we got we got good things coming. And uh, in the meantime, while we're waiting, we've got two short films that we'll be making um, over the next few months. So they'll be out there soon. Okay, well.